Bob Perry from ConsortiumNews.com. We're talking about the surge, the history of the Iraq War, especially around 2007. But uh, can you uh, verify for me, am I right? Do you remember? Is that right that really the what became, didn't start out this way, but quickly became the predominantly Sunni-based insurgency in Iraq, that they had tried to make a deal with the Americans that, look, just patrol us or let us patrol our own neighborhoods and stop killing us and we'll stop killing you. In the summer of 03, 04, 05, and finally in 06, the generals started to decide to accept their offer after the Civil War was lost, basically. Well, there were elements of this of the Sunni uh, side of Iraq that, that you're right, were, that were, uh, uh, was eager uh, to, to figure out some way to deal with the Americans as, after Saddam Hussein was ousted. Uh, however, as you as you remember, there was this uh, in, very imperious approach taken by uh, the, the the neocon-led U.S. occupation, which was going to essentially remake Iraq in some free market uh, neocon uh, desired image, and that's what sort of created this uh, this other dynamic where it became clear that the interests of the Iraqis were going to be essentially overridden. Um, and that did push some of the Sunnis into into greater and greater resistance. Uh, and it was only after the, uh, the 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 occupation had essentially failed that there was a sufficient rebellion uh, among the Iraqis, and then spreading from the not just the Sunnis but into some elements of the Shiite population, that the the U.S. commanders uh, essentially said we're not going to push this extreme uh, political ideological agenda. We're going to try to work something out. And that's where you had uh, Generals Casey and Generals Abizade, um, uh beginning to uh, reach out uh, and accept some of these, these peace overtures from the, uh, from the Sunnis. Um, and effectively, they were given money and allowed to patrol, pro- patrol their own areas. Uh, in exchange for rejecting Al Qaeda, and um, and that that's began to lead to uh, at least some rel- relative peace in in the western part of Iraq. Um, obviously, there was also during this phase because of the rivalries that were unleashed by the U.S. occupation between the Sunnis and the Shiites. The civil war followed, and you had this horrible mess, uh, this, this nightmare situation across the country. Um, and eventually, that was also burning out for because of the separation of the two sides. Uh, and that's why when, when, when Bush came in with the surge, the surge, whether it was a, a slight help, I mean, I think it might have actually been a harm because by uh, adding additional U.S. troops and, and being more aggressive in the use of uh, a counterinsurgency approach, which we saw uh, most dramatically in that, in that WikiLeaks uh, released uh, video of the attack on those, uh, that group of Iraqi men, including two Reuters newsmen, uh, just eventually slaughtering them for no particular reason, um, that was sort of a symbol of, or an indication of what the ground reality really was in Iraq, this kind of utter brutality and indiscriminate violence. But that was part of what the surge brought, too. So eventually it, it calmed down. But to then credit the surge is the big mistake, because much of this would have happened, I think, whether the surge uh, occurred or didn't occur. And in fact, the surge may have made things worse and even delayed the uh, uh, delayed the, the more peaceful situation mm-hmm. that ultimately prevailed. Now, there's so many things. I mean, it's a giant years-long war. Uh, but, uh, you know, as long as you mention that uh, collateral murder video, um, I talked to two guys from that brigade or battalion or whichever. I, I don't know all these things because I'm not a vet. But anyway, uh, they both said that their boss, Lieutenant Colonel Kozlarich, uh, who, uh, along with um, General McChrystal, was involved in the Pat Tillman cover-up and, um, uh, well, any other things. Anyway, but the point is this. They both told me on this show that they heard him, specifically both of them, from him to them, not passed through a sergeant or something. They heard him instruct their group that if there's an IED attack, you just shoot 360 degrees, kill anything that moves that can possibly be around. How a lot of them disobey the order and would just shoot up in the air, right. uh, things like that. But he was ordering them to commit war crimes, 360 degree rotational fire. And then I'll add one more thing to that. It's uh, the the entire team is described in their time 
in Iraq is described in the book The Good Soldiers by David Finkel. And uh, as we were talking about with Gareth Porter on the show yesterday, at no time does anyone in this entire brigade, including Lieutenant Colonel Kozlarich, seem to understand that as they're fighting the Sauterists, they're in the middle of, or at least they just finished fighting a civil war basically on behalf of Muqtad al-Sadr and his allies in the Iraqi National Alliance. And here they are, um, as Gareth Porter put it, they just need an excuse to fight the war. The war against the Sunni insurgency was over. They had to fight somebody. So here they're fighting this guy who's an integral part of the government that we installed in power there and is obviously the guy who, more than even Sistani, it looks like, will be inheriting the power at least from Baghdad to Basra, when we finally go, Bob? Well, I think all those points are well taken. The, uh, the, I think the collateral murder uh, video does give you a sense of that. There was this attitude, which is, was part of the surge approach, but it preceded it as well, uh, to basically kill the so-called MAMs, military-age males. There was almost a, uh, uh, if, if you had any excuse, you could do it. Uh, and that's clear from a number of cases that have been brought uh, where, uh, where, where there were times where uh, court, courts martial were held against soldiers for excessive violence, but in almost every case, the soldiers simply said, we were following the rules of engagement, and they were, and they were essentially vindicated. They were let off. Sometimes they'd be uh, uh, nailed for something like lying to their superiors or planting a, a weapon on a, on a victim, but in terms of the actual killing of the people, that was just part of the rules of engagement. Uh, they were extremely loose, and and during the surge, they seemed to have gotten even looser, uh, where uh, where there was this kind of encouragement to just basically take out people. And and, and I think any any country that suffers under that, uh, as much as we may think, oh, that the people want to rebel and stand up against it, but terror does, as as tyrants have learned across time in history, they terror at some point works. That you can you can intimidate a population through violence to such a level that eventually um, they don't want to continue anymore, and that was kind of what happened here. That was another element of of the of the ending of this uh, at least the worst phases of of the of the war in Iraq. Um, but I think overall that that is quite a, a dismal and and horrible situation that uh, uh, that we tend to ignore. We tend in in this effort to sort of declare victory in Iraq, uh, this unseemly effort that we saw a cover of Newsweek uh, some months ago, fi- victory in Iraq finally, um, and 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 the, the celebrations of the neocons in Washington saying they were finally vindicated and shown that they were right all along. Uh, it, it ignores the fact that there were substantial war crimes committed by the United States. By, by the Bush administration, uh, most 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 directly, but involving uh, large numbers of American troops, uh, involving now the to some degree the Obama administration, uh, in the continuation of some of this. So it it's it's not by simply declaring victory. It, it, it's a it's it's one of those situations where you have to think that this that this was an immoral and um, and rather disastrous experience. Uh, and should be seen like that for all involved, and not uh, not with this group uh, jumping around saying that they had won, they were that they've been proven to be right all along, and that the surge worked. Yeah, well, and even I guess when Woodward's book came out about all this, it came out that really it was General Keene and these uh, others who had come up with the surge strategy, and I guess they just brought fat neck Fred Kagan and the AEI crew along for the ride in order that the neocons could get some credit, even though really they just came in to put their name on it at the end. Isn't that right? Give me a yes or no there, because we're almost out of time. Well, I don't know. I'm not, right? I'm not sure all the details, but that's true. Those two people certainly were involved. Keen had the idea, yeah. and Kagan helped sell it. Mm-hmm. All right, now, there's a couple more things here real quick. There were reports that, look, oh, my God, weapons of mass destruction were found after all. But isn't it the case that all those were simply weapons that had been declared by Iraq and turned over to the international inspectors, UNSCOM and UNMOVIC and the IAEA, et cetera, and were under seal? And we're just sitting there inert doing nothing in Iraq, left in Iraq by the U.N., and they didn't get in the hands of anybody to do any fighting with until the U.S. invaded and destroyed the security system in that country, right? There were no caches of, of WMD discovered. There were some residual There were some residual weapons that, you know, mustard gas and so forth that were found in a few places, but these were not part of any, uh, any uh, weaponry that the, that the Iraqi military was going to use. Yeah, I saw on in uh, Wired 
on the Danger blog, they talked, they had these quotes from these people. They didn't seem to highlight the significance of the soldiers saying, yeah, we came to the store place and the seals had been broken. I mean, the UN seals. Uh, just like that story about some yellow cake was removed a few years back. But it was under UN seal the whole time. And I guess uh, we don't have time to address the Afghan surge metaphor, but suffice it to say we're not fighting for the majority in Afghanistan, and they won't be able to say the surge worked there, Bob. Thanks, Scott. See you, man. Everybody, that's Bob Perry, ConsortiumNews.com. Here's uh, more anti-war radio after this.